Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jagasa and you are Jagasa Inc. In today's video, it's going to be exciting and it's not just going to be me sitting down and sort of talking to you all. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about how you can book your accommodation abroad. So now the question is, why would you want to even do that? Why, why don't you just go and see the flat yourself? Now the thing is, when you're a student and you're applying for a degree abroad, it's very difficult to make a trip there. But, uh, what I did was, I basically booked everything online because obviously I wanted a place to go there. I didn't want to waste my money on a hotel. Now you are going to get up and personal with me and my computer. It's going to be in lifetime. So if this is not the kind of video for you, I'm sorry, but I hope this helps out whoever is actually booking it because I know that people talk about factors but what exactly do you do? We're going to discuss this now. So the first thing that you want to do is basically look for a location. Now where exactly do you want to go? Now are you coming from India? Are you going from Middle East? Where are you going from? So for example for me I went from India to United Kingdom and so that was my location and then I knew that I'm going to the Huddersfield University. Obviously you need to know which university you're going to because that's where you need to be Going, or your workplace for example so this is a university so you're going to be looking for things which are sort of around the university for example because that was my criteria if you want to live a bit further away that's up to you obviously then you're going to look for things around that now I'm on Google India just because I wanted to go for a more regional search engine I'm going to type my university's name which lets Google know that that's where I'm going and then accommodation which would ultimately give me student accommodations or you can just write student accommodation as well. So the first three are uh, Unite Students, IQ, Prime and these are all advertised ones so that probably means that they are private. Um, then what you want to do is first go to the actual official website of your university. Now what this will help you do is basically get a very clear perspective of what they are suggesting. Obviously the decision is yours, but what are they suggesting? So I'm going to go down the side. Now these three that you will see in the beginning uh, the Stotts Hall, I don't know how to pronounce the second one, and Dick Student are basically um, the ones that are affiliated to the university. Now some campuses have accommodation on campus as well. You can also see like a room tour. You can also see my room tour. I live in a private accommodation so you can see my room tour on my YouTube page as well. And then you have uh, alternative accommodation which basically translates to a private accommodation. Now um, there is Aspey House, there's Castings House, there's Sawmill, there's Snow Island and there's Firth Point. Now uh, before I get into any the next step what I wanted to do was go through like a bit of terminologies with you guys just so you're aware of what these things mean because it might not be the same terminology that's used in your country for example so the first is individual studio apartment which is basically you have everything within your room kitchen living room everything the second is um, ensuite rooms which are in your you will have a room and you will have a flat that's sharing so obviously you've got a, the kitchen which is going to be sharing and your room will be yours alone. And then you have shared kitchen, living areas, studios with their own kitchenette. Kitchenette, you know what it means. It means basically the kitchen and you will have your own living area. So that's like a studio like we discussed before. Now uh, that's basically what it is. So if you know the terminologies, it will be easier for you to kind of browse through other websites when you actually get to it. Now, uh, the next step is basically for you to decide, are you going to go for the private or are you going to go for the public? The other thing that I did was basically I created an uh, Excel sheet like this one that you're seeing right now. And I did this, this is the actual one that I made last year. So what I did was I uh, put down all the accommodations that I could find. I put in name, the distance from the university, the book now price and... Um, all of the other variables that I thought were important to me while making my decision. Now the book now price is basically the price that you book, if you book today, how much would you be paying? Because it's usually a bit less. Now the type of bed is obviously something that was important to me, could not be important to you, so you can skip that. Your, um, how much are you paying per week? How much will you be paying per month? In UK, it's usually decided per week, so you wanna make sure that you're translating it to what it is. Um, for me, having an ensuite bathroom was really important, so, I obviously put down what kind of bathroom I was getting, whether my kitchen was sharing or not, whether uh, my utilities were included or not, and you'll see exactly why all of this is so important. This is how you decide your budget. Now, obviously, when I ask you, what is your budget, you wouldn't really know because you're going to a new country. So 
it will tell you like an approximate range and this is when you can decide okay so what am i looking at can i afford 75 pounds can i afford 200 and this obviously depends upon the city that you're in so if i was for example going to london my maybe my minimum would be 200 pounds per week and not the maximum here sort of the maximum was anywhere between 200 to 250 and so i decided that for me 95 was something i could go with um and something that I would be comfortable with. Then I created another sheet alongside my Excel sheet where I wrote down all the things that I want and then I wrote down all the things that are available in the city that I'm going to. So I wrote down that I wanted an ensuite bathroom. Now an ensuite bathroom was available but it was really small. So that was fine by me. I wanted a kitchen inside but with the budget that I was going for, I was either getting a sharing kitchen or I was going to get a walking distance from the university. So what I did was I kind of settled for walking distance from the university and I'll tell you why. And then I went for sharing kitchen because I thought, okay, fine, at least I'm getting the bathroom. So that's exactly what I did. The next thing that uh, we're going to do is the cost calculation in total. Obviously, the cost that you see on the website is not the cost that you pay um, rent. So what is the cost of your accommodation per week into four? Because that's you're going to be your monthly. So we are kind of calculating per month. You can also calculate in total, but per month is easier. And then you're going to add whether your bills are included or not. So you're going to add your bills. An approximate cost of your bills for example your heating your water bills uh, and things of that sort and then you're going to add your Wi-Fi and then you have transportation costs so now in this would this should give you your total final cost right but so for example I paid um, pounds XY per month and then because my bills were included it was a zero and because my Wi-Fi was included, it was a zero. And then I chose something that was walking distance from the university, which meant that at least the transportation towards my university would be zero as well. So my final cost remained X, Y, which was really easy for me. Uh, and I didn't want to go through the whole drama of, you know, finding an accommodation, finding all of that thing, and then trying to pay for my bills. So I stuck with the X, Y amount, and I think that was it was a very, very good decision. So that is how you calculate your budget, that's how you find out your price, that's how you find out your final cost and if you have any questions about how to really get along with your accommodation or anything else that you want to ask about actually booking an accommodation from abroad, please let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to answer. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because it means a lot to me and I hope you found this uh, video really resourceful. Please hit the thumbs up because that matters and you can follow me on my social media i do do a lot of lives on instagram and they're supremely fun so i'll see you guys later bye